Good to see you. Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. I good hope everybody morning. is fine this morning. A um, few announcements. Um, prayer service tonight at 6 p.m. in the North Richland Hills campus. Um, bab baptism Sunday is February the 7th. Um, that's our next opportunity for those who wish to commit their life to the Lord. One weekend for students grades six through 12. Um, imagine one weekend with your closest friends making a lifelong memories and growing your relationship with God. Uh, that would be one weekend. So, uh, Mom to Mom, the spring semester starts February the 8th, Monday, February the 8th. And uh, any moms with kids between birth and fifth grade are invited. This semester will be meeting from 930 to 1130 on February the 8th, the 22nd, March the 8th and 29th and April the 12th and the 26th and end up on May the 10th. The cost is $40. That includes child care, book, study, crafts, and uh, guest speakers, etc. Realm Connect. By now, you've probably received an invitation to join Realm. If you haven't, uh, visit the ministry gallery today and contact the or contact the church office. And I couldn't get on Realm Connect because my phone was too old. Oh. But my wife let me get a new phone and now I'm on it. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and celebrate recovery. Uh, if you have any hurts, hangups, or habits that need to be addressed, um, Celebrate Recovery is here to help. So uh, Tuesday, 7 to 9.30 p.m., a women's group step study has begun, and you are still welcome to join. This group meet from 6.30 to 8.30 every Thursday night. Men's group step study is available uh, for anyone that's interested. Okay, that is our announcements for coming events and all. Um, do we have any prayer requests from anyone here? Just an update on Lisa, our daughter. Okay, okay. She's still in the middle of tests, and they've added to that. She has gallstones now on top of all the other horrible things that are going on. Oh. So... It's really hard for her to be patient with all this. I mean, all of us, we, we just feel like she's just been hit time and time again. But anyway, she's still seeing lots of doctors. So just please wow. pray for a speedy response, especially yeah. like this gallbladder yeah. situation, because uh, we don't want anything to happen like it require emergency surgery or something. Right, right. Well, I'll give a little update on my sister, Janet, uh, who lives in Colorado. She had come down with the, the COVID virus and uh, uh, talked with her this week. And she's doing better. Uh, she's now weaned herself off of the oxygen that she was on 24 seven. But um, she says this stuff just hangs on and hangs on, so. Um, I'm just hoping she can shake the rest of all of the bad stuff that goes along with it. Um, so, okay. If I can, let's go. Charlie to the has one. Oh, oh, excuse me, Will. Well, I've, I've got. A, I was going to ask you about your sister, but we have a praise. William's uh, scope Thursday came out clear. Oh, man. Hey. Hey. 
I think I have any more tumors. He doesn't have to do any more treatments or for at least six months. They want to see him again in six months. So we're thankful for that. That's that's and great. That's what we were hoping for. We didn't under I didn't hear who Donna was talking about from way back in the back room. Lisa, her daughter. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Still going through um uh talks with doctors and they're still running tests and all, so. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we're able to gather to study your word. Um, Father, I would ask you, um, to use our new leaders in power to help try and unite our country again, um, to uh, put aside all of the hates and, and differences that there seems to be now in, in this nation. Um, Lord, I just, I just hope that we can get back together as a country, put all of this aside. Uh, Lord, use our leaders. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. All right, Mr. Wheel, it's yours. Okay. Uh, I hope you've got your Bibles with you today, not just the quarterly, because I'm, I'm going to probably do a little more than just the verses that are in the quarterly. But, you know, the, the lesson's really about, uh, uh, I guess we just centered around love one another, <laughs> you know, loving all, loving all people. Um, it's, um, it's something that we hear about and we know we ought to do, but I think most people have a little bit of a problem loving some folks, you know. Uh, is there anybody that you specifically have trouble loving or wanting to be around? That's getting pretty personal. <laughs> Who's that one? He said that's getting pretty personal. Oh, that's getting pretty personal. I, you know, I, I tell you, when we were in the Philippines, um, there's a lot of... Uh, gays homosexuals and and sometimes without eating there'd be a couple to come in that would just be uh, flaunting it and and being just couldn't keep their hands off each other and 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 just um, i just wanted to get up and leave frankly <laughs> yeah I mean, I, that makes me very uncomfortable um I had an uncle that was in the U.S. Navy, and he ended up married a gal up north and lived up in, well, North Dakota for a while and, and other places, but he cussed like a proverbial sailor. And, and you know, just being around him wasn't comfortable for me. I, I just don't care for that, especially when they're taking God's name in vain and, and such. I just, there's just some folks like that. I find it really uncomfortable to be around, but uh, Gina says we're to love everybody. And I think um, honestly, um, we probably have some trouble doing that, but th this lesson really takes place um, in fact, if you'll turn in your, your Bibles over to Luke chapter 6 and write about verse 17, it says he came down with them and stood on a level place and a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from Judea, Jerusalem, the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon. He had a, a, a large group of people and it says it's on a flat place. You know, unlike the Sermon on the Mount over in Matthew 5, that was up evidently uh, on a mountainside and I just kind of always pictured him maybe sitting on a big rock up there on the side of the mountain and everybody gathered around uh, 
to the sides and below him to listen. But here he is on a flat place. So it's a sermon on the plain. Now the sermon on the plain and the sermon on the mount have some similarities and, and we'll, we'll see some of those. But um, it's, it's a, a, a great deal of people. But if you'll notice, I think about verse 20, he says, and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, uh, he's addressing all of these people, but he's specifically addressing his disciples. Now, that doesn't mean just the 12. Uh, we have some indications that there was, you know, sometimes uh, one or 200 people that followed him like his disciples. These 12 were his inner circle. They were the ones that he personally selected. And, and if you just kind of glance through this first part, we're going to start really down in, in uh, verse uh, 27. But look at, the, look at these passages right before. He talks about blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you who weep. Blessed are you when people hate you and exclude you and revile you. Uh, uh, on, a, on the account of the Son of Man. And then the next, very next passage is 24, 5, and 6. He says, woe to you, woe to you, woe to you. And, and then he starts off today's lesson and he says, but I say to you. Um, he's been talking to these folks and he has these People in general that are blessed, you know, like that are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God, that are hungry, for you'll be fed and be satisfied, uh, that weep because you'll, you'll laugh, you're going to find joy. And, and, but he says, woe to you that are rich, for you've received your consolation, you've, you've received your reward in effect. Woe to you that laugh now, for you're going to end up being mourning and weeping. And, and, Woe to you when all people speak well of you because your fathers did the same as the prophets. And of course, then he's, he's referred before as he's taught his disciples and others that, you know, his, their forefathers killed the prophets. And so, but he says, verse 27, but, but I say to you who hear uh, that, but just as one of those, you know, always kind of watch the but when they say a but it's it's referring back really kind of to the to this other part the woes and and even the the blessed up there he says but I say to you and he's gonna he's gonna give us some specifics about what they should do I I say to you who hear uh, it's kind of like remember Jesus says in several passages those that have ears to hear, let them hear. Uh, there were a lot of folks just like we do sometimes and like we probably did in school when we were back young. Uh, we heard the teacher or we heard the principal or we heard the coach, but we didn't pay any mind. <laughs> we just kept on going. And, and that's what Jesus found too. There were people who could physically hear him but they really weren't paying attention. And remember, he's looking directly at his disciples now. He wants his disciples to really get this. So I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Oh, wow. Uh, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Uh, well, that's, that's kind of, he's, he's really saying here, you know, that uh, be good to those that hate you. And, and that word hate, there's one of those ongoing verbs that they continually hate you. It's not just a one-time, um, you know, flare up of temper and like some child or teenager would suddenly say, I hate you. You know, it, that isn't, that isn't the kind of hate. This is the kind of hate that's dwelling in their heart and, and it's just ongoing, continuing 
uh, hate you. But he says, those that hate you, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to, to love and do good to those that hate you and bless those that curse you. Um, we're, to, we're to want God's blessings on people and, and, and curse you is not just, they're just using uh, bad language to holler at you or something. To curse you means they have a desire to see bad stuff happen to you. And it's just like that, that early part, you know, uh, do good to those that, that hate you. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing. It's not just a, 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 they curse you out and, and go away and, and they just, you know, don't kind of like you or something. This is somebody that continually wants to see harm come to you. And what you're supposed to do is to love them and, and uh, bless them. And he says, and for those who abuse you, those that literally um, want to take advantage of you, want to, to cheat you, want to take things away from you. Uh, and he says, and to the one that strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for the one who takes away your cloak, do not hold withhold your tunic. He's talking about, you know, if someone strikes you for Christ's sake, someone strikes you because they don't like that you're a Christian and you try to follow Christ. If, if they're wanting to, to strike you, he says, you ought to be willing to suffer for Christ's sake and, and not just accept the strike, offer him the other cheek also. Uh, that's a... That's, uh, uh, the kind of love, I mean, you know, when you get to thinking about it, um, that's the kind of love that God displays for us in Christ. When Christ was dying on the cross, remember what he said, first things, Pastor, I think, mentioned it today. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them. Forgive the people, even that had they had beat him, they had tormented him, they had ridiculed him, they had taken him out there and, and drove these nails through his hands and, and, his, and his feet and hung him up on that cross. And, and Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Um, boy, that's, that's kind of tough act to follow. But that's exactly what Jesus is telling his disciples here. He says, you need, to, you need to be willing to offer the other cheek. And the one that's going to take away your cloak, of course, the cloak was the outside garment. And, and he said, offer your tunic also, the inside garment. You know, don't, don't, uh, don't withhold anything from them. Be willing to give it all to them. And, and he said, give to everyone who begs from you. And from the one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. Now, I don't know if in, any of you have been to a, an, a third world country um, and seen the beggars that some of us who've been overseas a lot have seen, but <clears throat> you know, it. <laughs> you stop in the traffic in Manila at a red light and pretty quick, there's somebody coming up and rapping on your window and holding out their hand, begging. Um, you often have people would come to the to your gate if they they could make it in into your subdivision and get in, and they would come to the gate and, and ring the bell or holler from the gate and and be asking for. Most of the time, they wanted money. And that's what they wanted as they, they came to out, out there. I don't think I don't think that he's necessarily saying that we're just supposed to give to everybody that that comes to your door or everybody that that begs. Uh, some of them 
in fact, in the Philippines, it was well known that a lot of the beggars were um, organized and there were kind of like they had a, uh, a clan that operated on certain corners or a gang that operated on certain areas. And, and uh, if you're going to beg in that area, you had to you had to be approved by them, and then they would take a cut from everything that you got. It was just a that way. Um, and and you 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 couldn't if you took this literal it says just give to everyone who begs from you. You there's no end to it. But I think he's mainly talking about people you know, people like in the church. And if they come asking, he says, really here he's saying, don't even think about how legitimate their asking is. Just go ahead and give to them. I mean, you know, your father gives good things to you, even though we know we're sinful and we don't do right 100% in line with what God wants, but God blesses us and gives us anyway, and he wants us to be generous to the poor. If you look all through the Old Testament, time and time again, it talks about that God uh, watches over, God cares for the poor, and for rich people and powerful people to abuse the poor, uh, it makes very clear that he's going to hold them accountable for that. So, you know, just remember that when people are needing and, and you, know, you know them, uh, if you've got the means to do it, Jesus says you need to do it. You need to help them out. Uh, and, and he goes on talking about that, you know, one that takes away your goods. Don't, don't even uh, ask back for the ones that take away your goods. Don't ask them to return it. It's almost like your neighbor, they borrowed your drill or something and, and, and you're waiting for him to bring your drill back and he just never does and never does it. He basically says, hey, just gift it to him. Just forget it. Um, you know, it was a lesson I had to learn when I went to the Philippines because uh, over there, a lot of times people will ask for help and, and Filipinos help each other. But often when they help each other, um, it's not with the expectation that you're going to pay it back directly. It's, 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 it's they call it utang. It's, it's, Utang nala ob. It's a debt of the heart. And so when you help, when you're able to and you help somebody, you don't necessarily ask for it back because maybe in the future you're going to need some help from that person. And since you help them, they have that utang nala ob. They have that debt of the heart. So if it's within their capability, they have to help you. And, and when you when everybody does that, uh, it kind of comes out even finally, you know, because you're you're all helping each other when you need it, and and then when you you help somebody else, and then later they're doing okay, and and you have a need, and it may not be money, it may need you need an introduction to somebody, or you need a, a job, or whatever they have to remember you helped them when they were in a bind and now they need to help you it's it's that 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 kind of, of thing and and that whole culture works around that um, we don't we don't do it as much here in fact you know Texans are kind of uh, fond of talking about you know uh, holding yourself up by your own bootstraps that's kind of hard to do to pick yourself up, but uh, that's that's the kind of image that we we uh, we do. We we want to be independent, but uh, Jesus here is telling the disciples when people are hurting and and they have a need, and you can you can 
help them with that need, you, you need to do it and don't, don't worry about getting it back. Um, in fact, he, he says, if you look down through there, he says, hey, um, you know, even sinners, they lend to people that they know will pay them back. They love people that they know love them. Um, so he says, if you do that, what real grace or favor uh, do you think God owes you for doing that? Well, really none, because you're just doing the ways of the world. But when you would give to someone and, and not even expect to return, um, he's saying um, that's, that's good. It, it goes down, he says, if you love those that love you, what benefit? In fact, that word benefit is also could be interpreted grace. What grace is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. This is down in verse 32 and 33. If you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit, what grace is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Verse 34 says that and if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. So he's saying when we just, we lend or we help people and all the ones we help are ones that we think are going to help us back. The only ones we really love are just the people that we know love us. Um, he says, well, that's the way of the world. What credit, what grace is, is, is going to be there for you. But he says, look at, at verse 35, I think it is. But another one of those buts, go back up and look at those previous verses. And now he says, but love your enemies. <laughs> love people that hate you. Love people that want to abuse you. Love, love people that, that would continually curse you, wish evil on you, uh, and do good and lend, expect nothing in, in return, and your reward will be great. Wow, your reward will be great, and you'll be the sons of the Most High, for he is kind and to the ungrateful and the evil, be merciful even as your father is merciful. Uh, he said, you know, expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great. Kind of remind, remind you a little bit of Malachi 3.10, where he says, you know, trust God, try him and see if he won't open the windows of heaven and just dump out on you a load that, that you can't even handle. He will dump out a load of blessings on you that 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 you can't handle. Um, and and you know he said uh, he says for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. We have to remember what is it Paul wrote to the church at Rome. He said that that even while we were in rebellion against God, even while we uh, it literally almost hated God that God loved us so much that he sent his son. Uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. We, we have to realize that's the kind of love that Jesus wants to grow in us. If we're really God's children, if we've truly been born again, then we're going to, we're going to look a little more like a, our father, um, you know, I, it, it, we sometimes look at kids and how they behave and what they do. And, and somebody will say, yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> you know, these kids, they just, they're just like their dad. They're just, she, she's just like her mom. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, what Jesus is really saying, if we're really, God's child, then hopefully the apple's not going to fall far from the tree. If God could love us 
even when we were in rebellion against him, then we ought to be able to love others, even when they're mistreating and, and, and abusing and opposing us. And, and especially when they're doing it because we're a child of God, because of us being a Christian. It's, it's that same kind of thing. Uh, uh, not only are we to love one another, like in the, in the book of Acts, it talks about uh, the, what the people were saying about these early church, the early Christians. See how they love one another. But not only are you supposed to love one another, you're supposed to love those outside of the family of God, outside of the church. That, that person even that is opposing you all the time and, and, and really wishes evil and harm to come upon you. So he says, be merciful even as your father is merciful. Um, God has long patience. You look back again in the Old Testament and see how long he kept sending prophets and, and how long he kept trying to get people to turn back to him and, and, and to, to obey him. And, and, and it went on for not just a few years, it went on for hundreds of years. And, and God's patience. Judge not, he says up there in that verse, uh, was it 35? 37. 37, yeah. My print in this Bible is so small, I can't see the letter, I can't see the numbers. The, the words are a little bigger, but judge not, and you'll not be judged. Condemn not, and you'll not be condemned. You got two things there that are kind of kin, uh, judge not and condemn not. Um, and, it, and it's, and it's that kind of, it's not kind of a, it's not a kind of a judgment where you're asking for evidence. This kind of judgment he's talking about is where you're already made up your mind. You judge them and, and, oh, they're no good. That's rotten. You know, um, it, You've already, you've already said, judge not, and you'll not be judged. Condemn not, and you'll not be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and it'll be given to you. So you've got a couple of, of good things. He says there, you know, uh, give, and you'll be forgiven. Um, I think Jesus in his in his sample prayer to that his disciples asked him when they asked him to teach him to pray and Jesus gave that sample prayer and he tells them that uh, you know Father forgive us as we forgive those who who've wronged us uh, that's that's part of what Jesus said that we're to do we're to forgive like God forgave us. And, and he forgave us um, basically without us having to do much of anything in realistic terms other than just to accept him. But I mean, we didn't have to, we didn't have to pay some big price to get his forgiveness. Uh, we didn't have to, to, to sell everything we've got and give it to the church and, and, and live on the street or anything like that I, he, he just you know judge not and you'll not be judged condemn not and you'll not be condemned forgive and you'll be forgiven given give and it'll be given to you and look how he, he pictures that now we don't have we don't have the same kind of clothes that they have but you have this uh, outer garment outer robe that you wore and, and the picture here is, is of a guy that was sitting down and he's got his legs open and he's kind of got this big bowl in the cloth of his clothes. And, and it's all to be, uh, it'll be given to you good measure, 
pressed down, shaken together, running over, and we put into your lap. <laughs> it, it's not that you're just you're going to get it someday. He said, "Boy, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to you." And it's and it's like that Malachi three ten again. You know, it, it's just going to be more than you could have ever have expected. That's how generous God is. God's not chinchy. God's not stingy. When, when, when you get right with Him, He's going to unload on you liberally. And and this shaken down and 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 pressed down and and running up, it's like a, a a measure of grain or maybe flour in a in a container. And and you don't just pour it in. You pour it in and you shake it down and you pack it down and then you pour it on top, even where it's overrunning. It's kind of like in the Philippines, we'd go to the market. And, and if you're going to buy rice, uh, they had a, a certain scoop. And, and now the, most of the rice vendors would, would weigh it out, but they have a, a, a container that was kind of a special container in the market and and they could dip it into that rice and level it off and there was a certain price for that because they didn't have a a scale like out in the in the barrios out in the countryside well what he's picturing there is they'll dip down and and get it and then they'll shake it down and they'll take and scoop more on top and and it won't be just level full it'll be heaping full and that's the kind of picture he says that, you know, when, when, when we don't judge and when we give and, and we give generously, God's going to give even more. Now, it's not necessarily going to be a, a earthly reward here on earth. I mean, the prosperity gospel that we've all heard about a lot um, is, is literally, I think, a false gospel. It, it, God can bless people in, 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 in a material way, but that's not what he's guaranteeing here. He's guaranteeing the spiritual blessings, and he's also guaranteeing, you know, we're going to be, re, we're going to receive that kind of multiple rewards of what we've done, uh, and maybe just in the sweet by and by, uh, when we get to, when we get to heaven, um, uh, it, it's going to be shaken down, running over, and it'll be put into our lap. Or with the measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. So we see this reciprocal thing going on. Uh, if we don't judge and condemn people, then we're not going to be judged. If we give liberally, we don't just try to hold on to everything tooth and toenail. It's kind of one of those, like the old saying about uh, you, you get all you can, you can all you can, and you sit on the can. Um, <laughs> that's not what he's talking about here. He, he, he wants you to be as liberal as you can with everyone that you can so that he can <laughs> bless you. And, and, and that's, that's the kind of life he wants us to live. He, he doesn't want us to go around bearing grudges for people that mistreated us or did things. Have you ever been around somebody that just has been so put out because someone did something to them that they just got bitter and they they stay bitter and they don't make life miserable necessarily for that one who mistreated them. They make life miserable for everyone around them. And, and, and it, boy, that's a real shame when people just hang on to, to, to bitterness, hang on to the, the, the things that people did to them in the past, so much so that it makes them bitter, makes them worse. Um, I think Jesus is just saying, hey, don't hang on to those things. 
forgive, let it go, give. Um, even even when people don't deserve it, give. And if they take advantage of you, he's saying, let it go, forget it. Um, and and when you do, and and you have that joy in the Lord, he's just going to keep just pouring out those blessings on you. Um, he may not make you rich, probably won't, but he'll give you that peace that passes understanding and that joy in your heart. And some of the, the happiest Christians that I've ever known were some of the poorest people in the world. Um, they didn't have nothing up beside what even some of the poorest people in the, in the U.S. have. But they had the Lord, and they had joy in their heart from knowing him and, and trusting in him. And a lot of those poor people have to trust in him because they don't have anything else. Literally, they don't have anything else. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's like that. I heard that Chinese pastor that told the missionary that he, they prayed for people here in the U.S. because we're persecuted by prosperity. And, and, and I think, you know, maybe that's, that's so. Uh, God's not changing. And, and you know, he says God's measure is good. <laughs> I, I like that one. God's measure is good. And then that picture of just things that are given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, um, and and poured right into your lap. Remember um, the story about Ruth and Naomi, and how Ruth uh, went to sleep at the feet of Boaz that one night, and the next morning, when it was made clear to him that she wanted him as her kinsman redeemer what did he do it says he gave her seven measures of barley and put them into her outer garment i mean he just she held it out and he put all of this barley into her garment and i'm sure she just put it all together and 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 maybe slung it over her shoulder and carried it home to Naomi, and it was just a measure of the good that that Boaz wanted to do for Naomi and Ruth, and he followed up and did it, and that's the way our God is. It's a good picture, and and, and he, he wants to give those blessings, and and he wants us to get a lot of blessings because. We don't hold grudges. We don't uh, live lives that are just stingy and grasping and 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 uh, taking offense about everything. We're to exhibit God's character in the world. We're to learn to love people like God loves us, even with our faults. And and I think that's. That's what he's trying to make very plain to his disciples. And of course, all of these other hundreds of people from Jerusalem, Judea, Tyre, and all wherever they came from. So whether people are good or kind to us or not, we're to show them love by forgiveness or their criticism, uh, by giving them mercy, even when they been judgmental and 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 condemning us we're to be liberal with them even when others have been stingy uh, pretty tall order <laughs> pretty tough act but that's what god wants us to work on and if we're children of god and god does that for us he wants us to be like him. He wants us, 
apple to fall not far from the tree. And he wants us to, to have that same kind of mindset. And, you know, we can't do it on our own, but because we have the spirit of God living in our hearts and because we know of how he forgave us and how he loved us, even before we learned to love him, um, we have that example to keep looking at and keep striving for. Um, we need to remember God's great love and mercy to us. So you know, I guess it comes down to what's your guide? What, what do you use as your guide in relation to people around you? And not just, of course, those that love you, those that are in your family, but even those that don't like you <laughs> and, and maybe would abuse you if they had the chance. Any comments? It's a pretty tough lesson, you know, in real reality, because um, I'm afraid most of us fall short of doing all we could and should. But my thought is too, um, you know, right now I. I don't have relations with very many people that I would think would really literally hate me. <laughs> There's some people that just hate Christians in general. We all know that. Uh, but uh, I guess we kind of live in a, a little bit of a protected, capsuled world sometimes now. And probably even more so with the COVID, since so many of us are not going out a lot. But um, what do you think? You know, next week Robert's going to be teaching again, and he's, his lesson is um, I'll get back over there. Yeah, Luke. It says Luke 4, 16 to 30. I don't think that was, I, missed, I may have missed. That's right. <laughs> huh? That is correct. That's correct. <laughs> We're going to go backwards, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking, I wrote that down. I guess I was thinking about Luke maybe 9 or 10 or 14 or something, but it says rejected Luke 4, 16 to 30. So. Um, you can look in your quarterlies or on your, in fact, I've got, I've got one of these lists here. Uh, and it is Luke 6, 27 to 38 was our, today it rejected Luke 4, 16 to 30. I, I copied it down right, but I just wasn't thinking about it when I copied it down. I thought we'd keep going. Uh, of course, you know, they, these lessons skip over a lot of things that we could do. It's kind of like now when our pastor is going through Ephesians and he's just taking it almost verse by verse by verse here. That's um, uh, that's the way I like to see Bible study, but it takes you a long time to go through a passage when, when you do that. But um, it sounds like our pastor is going to take a year or so to go through Ephesians. So. <laughs> But it'll it'll be a be a, a good study. So y'all have a great week, and and let's just uh, uh, keep praying that that God will help us daily to live and be more and more like Him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Most of all, we thank you for your great love for us. Father, just just to give us bountifully of your spirit that we might learn more and more how to love people in the world, people that oppose us, people that may even hate us. Uh, Lord, help us to be a light in a dark world. Uh, a lot of folks 
today because of the COVID and because of a lot of other things, uh, seemingly uh, just having a real rough time. Some people just almost giving up hope of ever things, things ever getting any better. But Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to trust in your love and your will and your way. And just help us to learn more and more how to love not only each other here in our class and our church, but our acquaintances and people that we work with, people that are our neighbors, that we might be able to show your love to them. We'd ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You all uh, have a great week. Uh, Will? Yes. <clears throat> while, uh, while you were teaching, we got a uh, text message from Barbara Cox. And uh, she said that uh, they had run a, a scan on Ray and that they had found a mass in his left kidney and also that they had found an aneurysm in his lower back and uh, she was asking for prayers for God's wisdom uh, in, in going forward and also uh, for prayers for her to be able to sleep and rest better. So I just wanted to pass that on to everybody. That's good. Yeah, I need to remember them. That's, that's tough. That growth in the kidney probably giving a lot of pain. That, yeah. Y'all remember them? Anyone else? Yes. Well, let's do remember everybody and remember the folks that aren't here today or not online. Um, remember them in prayers and, and if you have a chance, give them, give them a call and check on them, see how they're doing. So, anything else? Okay. Y'all have a good week. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good week. Bye-bye. You too. Have a good week.